perfect love You rescued me so I could stand and say I am a child of God Just that right I want you to sing it out You split a sea You split a sea so I can walk the seas the seas of troubles the seas of the attacks of the enemy did he split the seas so that you could walk right through it have you walked through the valley of the shadow of death in 2021 Would you lift your hands and lift your voice, open them up and praise your God like he's your God alone. And Can you sing that song again? You split the sea, say. You split the sea so I can walk right through it. My feet were drowning. Shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb, coming after me. There's no wall you didn't break down, lie you didn't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb, coming after me. No one you won't tear down, 
Sorrow you didn't light up, mountain you didn't climb up, just to come after me. There's no wall you didn't kick down, lie you didn't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you didn't light up, mountain you didn't climb up, coming after me. Hey, hey, hey. No wall you didn't kick down, lie you didn't tear down, coming after me. Can you sing it like that? Come on. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Time to hold back. Come on, release yourself. If he's been kind, if God has been kind, has your God been kind? Who? 
the shadows Do not fear, do not fear He will guide you And He will keep you safe and sound Do you remember with He has promised To never leave you Not forsake you And His word is true God is true all the time he put a song of praise in this heart of mine god is good all the time through the darkest night his light will shine Christmas today so can we open our mouths and just be grateful one more time open your mouths and just be grateful one more time open your mouths and be grateful one more time just worship his holy name just glorify him just honor him give him all the praise the immortal God, the invisible God, the only wise God, the God of all flesh, the beginning and the end, all things in between, 
the almighty the all sufficient the kind God gracious king the lover of our souls the Buddha fault of power the almighty the almighty the almighty the God who is kind the God who is powerful the God who is merciful our king and our maker the horn of our salvation the king majestic Jesus 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 We all know your name. We are grateful for January. Yes, Lord. <laughs> we are grateful for February. Thank you, Jesus. We are grateful for March. Thank you, Jesus. We are grateful for April. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for May. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for June. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for July. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for August. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for September. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for October. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for November. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we are so grateful for December. Yes, Lord. We counted, oh God. Hey. And none is missing. Yes, Lord. It's not too early to say. Yes, Lord. Because we are confident yeah, that we, that's what you have done till this day. Yes, sir. You will complete, oh God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. 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 Yes, Lord. Jesus. Yes, Lord. We honor your name. Thank you, Jesus. We give you other praise. There is something that makes me come into your presence. My helper, there is something that makes me come into your presence. My helper. had no one to run to but to God and every time I ran to him every single time he helped me even when I was not deserving even when I didn't know why I was running even though I didn't know what to ask when I got to him he just had a way of making it all right in the end and for that reason I am grateful today for that reason I'm grateful today I'm grateful for our community Thank online. I'm grateful you, for Jesus. their families. I'm grateful for this community in this Thank room. You, Jesus. It is only God that could have kept us. And we want to say thank you Thank today. You. We decided to, today would just be a carol service. There will be a short word at some point. 
but it will just mostly be a carol service we will take the hymns we'll take the carol songs we'll just be grateful and then when we're done we'll take a chair a drink or two and we'll go home that's about all we're going to do today if if it was left to me i will shut it down till next year if it was left to me i mean think about it now we're not traditional like that yes so we don't have to show up on a sunday but i'm still listening he may just say you can, you can take a holiday for three weeks or thereabout and that would be nice yeah why why do we have to show up every time I, I, but i'm grateful yes lord <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah when um timila decided to sing you split the sea so I can walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I can stand and say, I am a child of God. I was like, wow. You know, there are some things that would have happened to you. They would say, Shebi, you talk, say so you be God picking. <laughs> but right at the edge of the Red Sea, with the Egyptians in pursuit, he'd split the sea and you walk right through. And then the things you feared the most will be drowned by his perfect love. Also, that you can stand on the other side and say, I am a child of God. I am just grateful. I know I'm not doing the cartwheels, but I'm grateful. I'm really thankful that this day, that we're here, that we're here, and I'm grateful. Father Lord, we want to say thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Our community online, just join us and just let's worship God. I don't know about you. There's nothing that I'm praying now that I haven't prayed before through this year. There's not one thing I will pray now that I, I, I'm sure I have prayed it before. There's not one thing I would ask in this moment that I had not asked before. And the confidence is, even if you feel like there is a Red Sea in front of you right now, the one that split it before can split it again. Because I saw in the Bible that the children of Israel had a Red Sea. There was something in pursuit for them, in pursuit after them. And God split the sea and they walked through. And I thought that was really cool. Maybe God will not do it again. But then I saw them at the edge of the Jordan. And the Jordan was even different. Nobody was pursuing them. They were what, the ones that were crossing over to get. And yet, the Jordan stood on a heap. And they walked through. So whether someone was pursuing you, or you are the one in pursuit of something, the sea can still part. The sea can still stand on a heap. So I just want us to try our best today and let's recklessly worship our king and our maker god bless you Holy 
is not a Sunday morning. Sunday morning, oh Lord. Each and every day that the Lord has made, we ought to give thanks and praise to the Lord. Yeah. All the mighty Father, Papa never tired. Only Papa let him be dying now. He was beginning, can't play to the Lord. Papa never tired, we we give him the praise. Woke up early this morning, not knowing what to say. I told and told about the good, good things he has done for me. All right, I told about my lovely children. I told about my pretty wife, and the whole I could pick up to say he was. Thank you, Jesus. I say. Questions I want to ask, many things I want to say. But first of all, I will come to him and say, Thank you, Jesus. I'm saying, Mama. Somebody shout it. Question. Give me the answer. I have a question, please. Give me the answer. I have a question. Give me the answer. I have a question, please. Give me the answer. Hey, tell me the one to make you prosper. Us. Jesus. Tell me the one to make you prosper. Us. Jesus. Tell me the one to make you fine and young. Jesus. Tell me the one to make you beautiful. Jesus. Really, really, really wanna make me go. Hey. I never tire me to give him the praise. Holy, 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 Praise the Lord wherever you are. Holy, 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 hallelujah. And you praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord wherever you are. Holy, 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 hallelujah. My mind made up that I want. 
Shout the praise in this house. Can you give him a that is not a shout? Can you give him a shout of praise?
the praise. You deserve the glory. There's nobody like you, Lord. You are holy, so holy. You are lifted up above. Worthy is the Lamb. 
Jesus, the reason for this moment, the reason for this very time, the reason for your existence, the reason why you are identified with God, the reason why you are accepted by God, the reason why you have been forgiven by God. The reason why you are a child of God. The reason why you are who you are. Without his name, you are nobody. Without his name, I am nobody. Without his sacrifice. Without his acceptance of coming to this world. We are nowhere to be found. God, we give you glory. We give you praise. Yes, Lord. God, we give you glory. Yes, Lord. Yeah, yeah. What a privilege to you know to worship at your throne, to be called to your presence as your own. You are holy. Thank you. 
you for. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for all that you gave. We are grateful. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name. Amen. All right. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says for to us a child is born to us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counsel mighty God everlasting father prince of peace The one we're here to worship tonight is not just the child that was born, but he's also the son that was in due time given. And his name is Jesus. Born of God, nowhere. I'm sure you have the lyrics of the hymns in your hand. So sing along. Hallelujah. Let's just continually be in the place of worship. Father, we thank you. For you're the light of the world, you're the light of the world. Bow 
just sing a carol and let it look like a funeral service or we're mourning 
it is the celebration of the birth of our king okay so i want you to get excited and rejoice in his presence i consider this moment to be the greatest worship moment in man's time because it's about the birth, the, the birth rather of the king that we worship so if you don't mind tonight just in the next couple of minutes lift your hands to god and help me celebrate that god nowhere no come and see what god come and see what god has done Sing it quietly. No. Expressing as we were in rehearsals, we were expressing that place. And somebody said, You know, Mary will just do, just play with the child, and the boy will, he wouldn't know, he didn't, she didn't know that that face was the face of the living God. Glory to God. He said, Mary, did you know that that's that, that boy that you give birth to? It's coming to save you. you. You have the lyrics of the song, and I want you to just meditate over those words before we sing. Because I want you to sing it with understanding. Like I said to you, all of these songs are worship songs. Any, any, any song about the birth of Christ is a deep worship song. Did 
did you know that your baby boy will one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will save our sons and daughters? That you know that your baby boy has come to make you this child that you deliver will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm the storms with his head? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels show? And you kiss the little baby. Consider you kiss the face of my God. Mary, did you know? Your baby boy is the Lord of all creation. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will wonder rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy? The great I am. The great I am. Is the great I am. Is the great I am. The great I am. Is the great I am. Is the great I am. The great I am. The great I am. The great I am. The great I am is 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 the great I am we worship the great I am we bow before the great I am. 
That our sleeping child is the great I am. Is that vulnerable child is really the great I am. There is a, there is a Christ living on the inside of that child. Jesus Jesus, we just worship you, give you praise. For us, this is not a silent night, even though it's a holy night. We're here to make some noise. We're here to rejoice and celebrate. We're here to lift up a praise and shout. We're here to let the devil know that we have a God and a King. Hallelujah. And we are not ashamed of him. He's the great I am. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. The Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Lion of the tribe of Judah. That's right. The lily of the valley. The bright and the morning The rose star. of Sharon. The great I am. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right, we, we, want, this, we want to do uh, joy to the world, and I understand that what is here is not a song. Please don't be angry. So if you're online, you can bring, your, bring out your phone. And Google joy to the world. <laughs> and if you're in the room also, please bring out your phone. I want you to check joy to the world. Amen. Amen. So there was a mistake here. So don't be angry. No, there's no anger tonight. Praise God. Amen. All right. Play on. And 
shall see and heaven and nature sing. Sing joy, joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Sing it out. The joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength.
glory to God. Wow. Please be seated for a few minutes. Like I said, this is just, this is our wrap up for the year. The well will reopen on January the 9th. Commanding your mornings will hold, but the well activities will resume on Sunday, January the 9th, 2022, if Jesus tarries. Hallelujah. When they started the song Noel, I was like, oh wow. Because I was asking God, what will we do? this afternoon what should i say because i knew definitely that today was not a day to go into the series the journey and continue that so my thing was lord what do you want me to say you know when we started this journey towards the end of the year when we started to count down you know we started pretty early we started at the beginning end of september to count down to the new year if you remember, I told you that you had to pay attention to everything God was saying on every platform that where we, um, we ministered because uh, all the instructions for the new year, if Jesus tarries, were being released ahead of time. And I said to you that God may just give me a break. Somebody shouted no as if they are God. So now that God has given me a break, Go and fight him and say, why did he give me a break? But I knew that today I had to wrap it up in a way that everyone would not forget. That yes, it's the greatest moment on earth. The day a savior was born for you and me. But I think actually, Timilade, that it's the beginning of the greatest moment on earth. Because if Jesus has stayed alive perpetually, there will be no redemption. Hallelujah. But that's not our focus today. Like I said, when they were singing Noel, I was thinking, oh yeah. You know, I was listening to the lyrics and I was like, oh yeah, that works. And then they got to Marie, did you know? And I just, something just broke on the inside of me. Because today, what the Lord asked me to bring to us is that we need to take a look at the different responses or reactions of the people who were around when Jesus was born. You know, when we look at the story of the, or the account of the nativity, except when you go to um, dramas, you know, when they do, they, they are dramatized, that people focus on the response or the reactions of the people who were around that event, that great event. When we teach it as, as a message, we focus on the person of Jesus and that should be so. But you see, no matter what Jesus came to do through his birth or by his birth, ultimately culminating in the cross by his death. Unless we responded properly, it would be a waste. Do you understand that? Unless we responded properly, it would be a waste. So if you go to the book of Luke chapter 2, you will find different people responding in different ways to the, uh, to the announcement that a savior had been born. And what I want us to pay attention to is look at the different responses and ask yourself if this were that day what would have my response have been and now that it is today given all that I know is my response up to scratch last year when we did this as the year was closing I talked to us I said where is John yes do you remember but today I want you to think about it. In, Matthew, in Luke chapter 2, I beg your pardon. It says, and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. Now, if you remember somewhere in prophecy, 
It was said that the scepter would not depart from the house of David. Do you remember? And then when we begin to look at the genealogy of Jesus Christ, you can see that you will trace him all the way to the lineage of to David. However, for Jesus to be born in Bethlehem, as it's been said, in Bethlehem, Judea, a great light will come. Someone had to wake up one day, pay attention to me, and issue a decree that was inconvenient. So this leader came up. Caesar Augustus came out and said, I want everyone to be taxed. And the only way I'll be sure that everyone is taxed is if those from Abriba will go to back to Abriba. Those from Kaduna should go back to Kaduna. Everybody go where you were born. Those from Langpese, head up to Langpese now. I want everyone in their father's house because I want to be sure that everyone paid this tax. It was both a tax and a census at the same time. So everybody, whether you were nine, nine months and one day pregnant, whether you were sick to the point that the doctor said you might die, everyone had to leave wherever they dwelt and head back to where they were from for a woman who was almost at her term to bring forth this would have been the most inopportune time for mary and joseph to travel but a decree had been issued and as long as this decree had been issued they were not trying to it was not a conversation and this morning the lord was saying to me when salvation shows up it may not be really convenient on the day that salvation whether the salvation of just getting yourself under the canopy of god or the salvation the continuous or daily salvations that we get to enjoy sometimes when the salvation is packaged it does not look like salvation it looks like a pregnant woman having to travel with her husband with not enough money in their pocket a long distance so that someone can collect his pennies. So if that were me, and if we were a group of feminists, or a group of Aluta people, we would be on the street with placards, and we would be shouting that we are not going. And the photograph of Mary with her big tummy will be what we will use as our poster child. How dare you, this leader, say this, this heavily pregnant woman should begin a journey all this distance simply because you want to count her. Do you not know that you could count her in her house? Just have, make the thing online. Let her feel a form that says she's from Bethlehem. But there was no placard. There was no one screaming, we can't go. Because the penalty was probably too much to bear. So whether you felt up to it or not, whether you had prepared for it or not, everybody started on this journey. And they set out and they headed out. Hallelujah. So they left. And because he was, they said, where we stopped was because he was of the house and lineage of David. Verse 5 says, to be taxed with marrying his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them at the inn. Here is another hurdle to scale. All of this so that prophecy might be fulfilled. The prophecy that says, do you understand? The prophecy that the son of God will be born in a manger. And so, Mary and Joseph started it. Who begins to go on a trip without having enough money? It's Christmas season. How many of us would dare to just put ourselves on the road and begin to, all of you that like to go to the east. How many of you are not hyperventilating now if you don't have enough money to go? Will you dare to get, I see, I see believers do a lot of faith things from January to November. 
When December comes and they want to go home, they can't hear anything but money. It's a pile of money that answers we need to go home. And so you see someone on the money of the 20 on the night of the 24th was when money showed up. He will get on the road on the morning of the 25th because he dares not go home without money. But Joseph and his espoused wife got on the road and they had no money. Not even enough. Honestly, to do the things that they needed to do. Yet, they were not home yet and she was in labor. So they branched an inn and said, okay, at least if we can't do a hotel, let's do an inn. And they said, there was no room at the inn. And I'm thinking, if I was the one that wrote the song, it wouldn't just be Mary, did you know? I would have added innkeeper, did you know that the child that was about to be born was the savior of the world. If you had that information, would you not have vacated the inn and spread something for the savior of the world to be born? Is that not how we should do it? But the innkeeper was oblivious that of the fact that history, no, scratch that, that divinity was taking, not, taking on humanity on that day, right there at his inn. The only thing he could do was turn them out. And if you and me were on Lucas that day, if I were there that day, I probably would give up my room for this baby to be born. But if I didn't give up my room because I liked my comfort, I will make up my mind that I will never come back to this inn again. This wicked innkeeper that cannot make room for a pregnant woman. But I mean, the innkeeper was nice still. He turned them to the manger. He said, the only place that is available is the stable. If you go into the stable, you may be able to just stay there. And there was no aluta still. Nobody was crying. Nobody was saying, that is inhumane. Nobody was talking about human rights. <laughs> Instead, they shoot them to the stable. And there she had the baby. They had no, what's that thing we used to wrap babies? Shawls. I didn't see a box of pampas. They said that she was, he was wrapped up in swaddling clothes. That is all the wrappers that they could find. Maybe the ones, for, remember that Mary was not even ready to conceive at this time and she conceived. They wrapped him up in, up in swaddling clothes and they laid him in a manger. Because there was no room for them at the inn. And while I'm thinking that Mary would have been looking at the child and said, really, Holy Spirit can pregnant person and she would have a human baby. And Joseph was thinking, probably, I am still going to get to the bottom of this matter. Ultimately, maybe we will still do a DNA. <laughs> but no one was saying anything. Verse 8 says, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the feed keeping over watch over their flock by night and lo the angel of the lord came upon them and the glory of the lord shone round about them and they were so afraid the first thing i saw was god was born the angel the glory did not because i didn't read it in my bible that the glory was radiating over that manger nothing it was just an ordinary manger but there were shepherds who were going about their business and they said the angel showed up the glory of god shone around about them they responded in fear because they'd never seen this kind of thing before and the angel said unto them fear not I bring you good, good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. I fear not. I am thinking that if today I was privy to the divine intel that God came back in the flesh. I would call 
Maybe I won't call CNN because I don't quite like them. I will call TBN. Eh? This is not news you break to shepherds. Ordinary people in the back streets. This is the God of the universe we are talking about that is born. Shouldn't you be telling the kings? Shouldn't you be telling the priests? Shouldn't you be telling the uh, Sadducees and the Pharisees, all the religious people? But they went to the shepherd. And the shepherds were afraid because they saw a light. And they said, don't be afraid because something great has happened. The Savior has been born. I like the expression. It said, for you, a Savior has been born. And I stood there for a bit. And I was looking at this scripture and I'm like, Lord, why? Why the shepherds? And it dawned on me that really, perhaps if we had to bottle salvation, they were probably the least ones who could afford it. And yet, they were the first ones that heard about it. God did not, they did not think it happened. The innkeeper did not run to them to say something extraordinary had happened. God sent a representative to go and announce to them, unto you is born this day in the city of David a savior. Just to also establish that whomsoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It didn't matter that these shepherds, they were the night watch shepherds. They went the during the day shepherds. You had to be a bit more down the ladder to take night ships. In verse 13 says, suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and peace on, and on earth, peace, goodwill on toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord had made known to us and they came with haste and found mary and joseph and the babe lying in a manger the angels were rejoicing that earth had received a savior and that was cutting call for the appearance of the angel but the shepherds did not debate remember we're looking at responses i'm not sure i'm preaching a sermon i'm just telling you what i saw so the shepherd said, ha, this thing they said has happened. Let's go and see it with our own eyes. And I was thinking to myself, if on the 25th of December, someone came and told me that somebody had given birth to a special child, would I take time out of everything I'm doing to go and find out where this child is or what kind of child this is? They left everything. How many of us know that shepherds are most likely not the owners of the flock? They abandoned it. And they set out to see the Savior. And I, th I took time to think for a few seconds. To the first time I heard that Jesus was born for me. That he died for my sake. Did I make haste to go and find out that first time? My response took many years. I promise you, many years. But here were people who were told, and they took off, and they said, let's go and see. The Bible said they came with haste, and they found Mary, and they found Joseph, and they found the baby still lying in a manger. I have thought that now that the announcement has been made that he's the savior, somebody will quickly bundle him out of that place. So he was still in the stable. He was still surrounded by horses and poop and hay. The savior of the world, extraordinary gifts wrapped in the dullest and the most ordinary wrapping papers. If I were the shepherd and I got there and this was what I saw, I would doubt for a minute that this was the savior of the world. No way would the king of the world be born and he would not have gold all around him. 
No way. It says, and when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all that all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. The shepherds came, they saw, and they started to tell everybody else, a savior has been born. Our savior has come. The Messiah has come. And people were, I, I was looking at the Bible to hear whether anybody else went to see. <laughs> if you are sitting in your house and you heard, is that not how we do? You heard that, at, uh, uh, what's that city called? The MM, MFM city. Eh? Prayer city. You heard that Jesus came in the flesh in prayer city. Will you come today? None of you will be here. All of you will be headed there. You want to go see Jesus. But this neighborhood, let's even call them a neighborhood, heard that the Savior had been born. The shepherds came and told them. We, the angel told us. We went there and we saw him. Nobody else made a trek back. The response is, so this Christmas, I know chicken is a bit more expensive than it used to be. So you may not eat yourself to stupor. Or maybe you would. With turkey and ram and all those things. And cakes and ice cream. And then in January, you will begin to jog. Whatever. But what I do know is that that's not the only response that we ought to have. What other response should we have? Again, remember I'm not preaching. So I'm allowing you to draw your conclusions. I'm just mirroring something to you I saw in the scripture today. Let's go on. It says, but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. So when Timilade was busy screaming, Mary, did you know? I said to Timilade, she knew. She pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen and as it was told them. Amazing! Ordinary people could rejoice because they were convinced that now help had come. Everybody as they told was wondering which meant they were calling committee. They were setting up WhatsApp messages. They were forwarding. You know those WhatsApp messages you receive that say forwarded many times. It was like it's been said that in Bethlehem, a child that was born in the stable is a savior. Could this be true? LOL. These Christians will not kill somebody. Then there will be another telegram group where they will get angry they will say ah this december it's another gimmick for them to collect tithes and offering that's what they do which one is that god was born in the flesh and i remember that there's a scripture that says in the day of his power his people shall be willing so there were people who on this or this special day were screen were screenshotting and they were forwarding it rather than to go and pay obeisance to the king and i realized that our day is not different from that day because even today how many of us are paying obeisance to the king but mary pondered these things in her heart she kept them and she pondered them it suggests to me that even Mary did not fully understand. But she did not, she was not dismissive. She kept them, she kept meditating. She probably was saying, Lord, you would amplify it for me. You will grant me clarity. I don't understand this one that you say this child, how is he going to save the word? She was asking questions. In verse 21, it says, and when eight days were accomplished, for the circumcising of this child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the, world, in the womb. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law, every male that openeth the womb 
shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to which, that which is said in the Lord of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves and two pigeons. You gave birth to God. I will print a card. The mother of the savior of the world. What will you do? Eh? Yes, now. We move. I know they are level again. But even though they had God in their house, they still went through the rite of passage. That is instructive. I think mean, someone is paying attention. You ought to recognize that even God had to be purified because he came in the flesh. Pastors will not even allow their children to be purified. They will not allow their children to be dedicated anymore. They'll be like, who won't dedicate my Peking? My Peking came anointed. Yes, was dedicated. But Jesus was taken. Because I remember that there's a scripture that says that after that, your obedience is complete. It meant that even as God, he couldn't skip a, t a step. And yet today, how many of us are skipping steps? Because we claim that we're anointed. We're not Jesus. We, we know that. We're just a tad too anointed to follow process. I'm just trying to show you the responses that I saw. In 25, it said, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. The, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took him up in his arms and said, Blessed God, and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thou serve thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of of all the people a light to lighten the gentiles and the glory of thy people israel there was a man that had been prepared for many years he was so devout devout and filled with the holy ghost that god told him you can't die until you see the salvation that i'm bringing to israel and on the day that the parents brought him, he probably wasn't the priest on duty but it said by the move of the Holy Spirit, he came in. And when he took the child, Mary didn't say a word. David didn't say, uh, Joseph didn't say a word. The child Jesus said, did not blink and say, can you see I'm Jesus? But he knew. And he said, now I can die. And I saw, I, sh I saw that our God will keep his promise to us. No matter how long it takes. If you're paying attention, you'll be seeing the different things that Jesus came to do. And how he brought it together. That a man would be kept alive. And I just saw that and I thought to myself, I know I'm not waiting for Jesus to be born again. But there are things that God has spoken to me. And I am convinced that I will not die until they come to pass he said now my eyes have seen their salvation and this was where it started for me this morning when I was thinking Lord what am I going to say and he said tell them that the salvation that I promised their eyes have seen it it's the reason why I can say to us we are going on break Because everything that prepares us for what is next if Jesus tarries is been given to us while others are still. And in verse 3 it says, And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them 
and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Ye, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. It's enough that he saw Jesus. Did he have to dampen uh, Mary's joy in that moment? He said to Mary, because he also had a revelation that he had lived through. And he said to Mary, he said, this is great help come to the people. But because of him, your own soul will be pierced with a sword. The pain that will come with you having this child will just be as great as the joy that has come with having him. But he said something. He said, when that day comes, what I want you to see, Mary, is that the hearts of many will be revealed by the way. Pay attention to me. They respond to Jesus the Christ. Verse 36, and there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age and had lived with an, with, with an husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow about four score and four. She had been a widow for 84 years. She was married only seven years. Got widowed and she departed not from the temple. But served God with fastings and prayers. Day, night and day. Now, I need you to pay attention to me. Anna was the widow that didn't have a child. Because the Bible didn't say she had a child. That's not the widow that goes to the temple to pray. Widows who go to the temple to pray are the widows that their husband have now left to take care of their children by themselves. So they need God to remember that he's now their husband. But this woman went and I keep wondering what was she interceding about? Why is it that she was there in the temple on that day? On that day? And I realized, and she said in verse 13, said, and she, and she come in in that instant, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. And it dawned on me that the intercession that Anna had been doing for 84 years was that the land would receive salvation. That became her life work. Every morning, every night she went to the temple. Her prayer was, let salvation come to this land. Let salvation come to this land. And God, for 84 years, it looked like he wasn't answering a prayer. But at the end of 84 years, he manifested. And the intercessor saw what she prayed for. And I keep telling you that Nigeria is working. And it will be in my lifetime. Verse 39. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own city Nazareth. And the child grew and was strong in spirit, filled with wisdom and the grace of of God was upon him. That's where I'm stopping. After all these stupendous things that Joseph and Mary now know, they went back home quietly. They did not ask for an appointment with the governor. They did not ask for an appointment with the pope. They did not go to Asso Rock to try to knock on the gate to say, have you not heard that we are the ones interceding for Nigeria? They went back home and life continued just like nothing had changed. Meanwhile, plenty had changed. And the Bible said, the boy and I almost said to the Bible, are you disrespecting God? <laughs> Calling God a boy. Said the boy grew. And the grace of God was upon him. When I started, I said I wanted us to look. And I wanted us to see. 
what the different responses were to the announcement that a king has been born. And I want you to put that beside how you respond in this season. Will this season be about the trees? And it's a beautiful one. Well done. Will it be about the gifts? Will it be about the parties that we're about to hold? Will it be about the fact that we are on a break for three weeks? And so everyone can just go knock themselves out and do what they want. Or would you sit down in these three weeks and say, Lord, speak to me. Let me not get into the next thing. Just as a carryover and continuum of this. Let something shift. I said, the world will not hold service. Did I say you should not do anything with God? What will your response be in this time? Some people will still feel that that is the most unchristian thing to do. Close church for three weeks. They will carry their load and go somewhere. And that's fine. Knock yourself out. Abby? But the, what I want you to see is there was not one person in the vicinity of when Jesus was born that their life did not shift because that thing happened. So the question is, what has shifted in your life since Jesus became born for you? Because what I know is that Jesus is not born for everyone at the same time. This is not an argument of whether he was born in October or December. That's not the conversation. The conversation is that he was born. Yes? And the question I'm asking is, when you finally realized that he was born for you, to die for you, what did you do with the information? How has that shifted anything in your life? The thing that I know absolutely will not happen in 2022 if Jesus tarries is that there will be no religion around us. But the thing I also know will happen is that we will be very careful how we respond to God moments. Brethren, today is, I'm just sitting there and I'm just really grateful. I'm grateful because this will be our fourth Christmas, Pastor Va. <laughs> if incidentally, the first Christmas we didn't, we also shut down church. <laughs> this will be our fourth one. And I'm standing here and I'm grateful because I can see people who have grown. And when I think about our work online, oh, I am so grateful to God. But if I had to say anything to you, because I would do a broadcast on the, I think I would do a broadcast on the 31st of December. So the things I should say, I'm going to keep some of them for that day. But if I will say anything to you, this moment, as we wrap up 2021 together, it is that Everything that God said he would do, including a virgin having a baby, he's able to do. Amen. So your responsibility is to embrace it. Your responsibility is to take the time in this time and drill. They said the shepherds left glorifying God. They said everyone the shepherd told wondered. And I'm praying for all of us today that we will not be in the crowd that wonder. And they said, Mary pondered in her heart. And they said, Simeon said, My eyes have seen that which you said they shall see. I can come home now. And they said, Anna was greatly encouraged because she saw that which she interceded for. What I need you to know is that when all of this dies, that dies down, when Zenith Bank remove all their, all their 
decoration from Zenith Bank Road and UBA removed their decor from that place in Marina. Eh? When all of that is done and life returns to normal, Jesus will still be Lord. Because after all of this, they just went home. I still can't, like, I will not go home. Everybody must come. I will make them bow to Jesus before the day came. Hey, me, a whole mother of Jesus. You can't try me. But when all is said and done, life will return to normal. But if you are discerning, you will know that life is no longer normal. So if I had a word for you, it is that we are stepping. I've told it before, into unusual, yes? We said that since September. And even though everything will look the same, the chicken had not developed two heads. The turkey is still just the turkey. When you finish all of that, all of you that will enter Bessie for this Christmas, and then you come back and be working in the beginning of the year to pay the Bessie, you'll be like you're going right back to the grind. It doesn't matter what your grind, how like the last grind your grind looks like. Something is shifting. Something has shifted. And my prayer is that you will not be oblivious. It will not be, it will not fly over your head and you will not know. In the name of Jesus. Father, we are grateful. We are grateful that you will do with us the way you do with us. Thank you, sir. This is all saying thank you for 2021. We are so thankful. Thankful for opening the floodgates for us early. Thank you for bringing us in as first partakers. Lord, we now take the time away so that we can process that which you have committed into our hands. Lord, if you tarry in 2022 when we come, Father Lord, let it be that everything that you took us through will begin to make sense in the name of Jesus. Let us know the difference between usual and unusual. Amen. Even if it looks just exactly the same. Let your name be glorified. Father, thank you. For all of you who did life with us online this year, thank you so much. This is a very Merry Christmas for us and a Happy New Year. On Sunday, for Sunday services, we will see you on January the 9th, 2022, if Jesus tarries. Commanding your morning will go on, but this service will see you in 2022. is going to join us to sing. We're launching, we're launching a, a new artist. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, oh come, oh ye faithful.
Cause you're worthy of it all You're worthy of it all Far from you are all things Far from you are all things And to you And to you are all things You deserve the glory You deserve the glory of worship we can't keep quiet we can't keep silent we can't celebrate our God like he's not the God so just for the next couple of minutes I want you to throw yourself in I want you to release yourself and just worship him and just lift up a praise just rejoice in his presence. Declare it. Open 
Open up the fountain of worship. Open up the fountain of praise. No other day. Such worshiping. together for your king is worthy 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 of praise worthy 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 of praise worthy of praise 
Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the choir. Hallelujah. Amen. I feel like we should just remain and stay behind. Hallelujah. The feeling is lovely. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a good thing to be in the presence of the Lord. Just feel the presence. Just experience the presence of the Lord. Experience the presence of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus, we worship you. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for 2021. Thank you, Jesus. As we package our offering, let's package our sight on our offerings. If you will, 